Well, good morning. Welcome to our service this morning. Those of you who are here, those of you who are at home, um, as we go through the service, at various points, words will appear on the screen behind me. Um, if those words are in yellow, they're for me to read. If they're in white, they're for you to read. Um, today is the first Sunday of Lent. And in the Gospel reading from Matthew, before Jesus begins his public ministry, he's led by the Spirit into the desert where he's tempted by Satan. Peter will be coming and speaking to us uh, in a little while on that passage in, in Matthew, that which, we'll hear, which we'll hear read, which is all about when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert. But before that, there's a short video about Lent as a season of renewal. So let's watch that now. will appear on the screen for us to read together. Remember, you read the words in white. As Jesus began his work for the world, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. As we begin our Lenten journey, may we be empowered by the Spirit, even in the uncomfortable places. In those 40 days, Jesus was faced with hunger, doubt, and temptation. As we seek to follow Jesus, may we be strengthened by the Spirit to do what is right when we face difficult choices. Jesus, le <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> Jesus left the wilderness, faithful and obedient to God, rejoicing in the one in whom he trusted. As we continue on our path to faithfulness, may we be led by Jesus Christ, Rejoicing in the Lord our God. Amen. So we're now going to stand and sing our first hymn, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. <laughs>
Please be seated. We now turn to a time of confession where we bring before God the things we've done wrong. Gracious and merciful God, we confess to you our reluctance to get involved in difficult situations and for the times when we're tempted to do what is easy rather than what is right. Father, forgive us, O God, and increase our trust in you. When we are tempted to use the gifts you give us to benefit ourselves at the expense of serving others, forgive us, O God, and increase our trust in you. When we are tempted to boast rather than being guided by the humility of Christ, forgive us, O God, and increase our trust in you. When we are tempted to use power to influence and control others, forgive us, O God, and increase our trust in you. Merciful God, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Forgive us our sins and fill us with the joy and peace of your salvation. So strengthen us with your spirit during this Lenten season that we put our whole trust in you as confidently as Jesus did. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As the Apostle Paul wrote, If you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These words contain the good news that in Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him <coughs> to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministered to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. And let's pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit. And as you know our weaknesses, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, today, as you realise, is the first Sunday in, in Lent, and Traditionally, we remember the story that we had a few moments ago uh, of Jesus being led by the Holy Spirit into the desert where he fasted for 40 days. And there he was tempted by the devil. Now, this story raises several questions, several issues that I'd like us to think about this morning. The first one is, is this Is there a devil? Is there a devil? The gospel says in verse 1, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
Then in verse 3, we read, The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command uh, the stones to become loaves of bread. So here, the devil speaks. He's not um, some force of evil. He's not just something in our imagination. He is a, a personal being. Now, in our world today, we, we find many people denying the existence of the devil. Or they, they simply see him as a, a comic figure. Um, each year I um, watch the, the Tour de France. And I don't know if anybody else is boring enough to watch it. Sorry, I shouldn't say that about you, but I'm saying it about me, really. But, uh, <laughs> and you see on, on the Tour de France, every, every, on every stage of the race, there's a little guy, and he's dressed as a, as, as a demon or a devil, and he's got a little pitchfork, and he's dressed in black and, and, and red, and he's got a, 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 a tail uh, with, a, with a pointed tail on the end, uh, and, uh, you know, that's how often people see the devil. It's a little comic figure. But if you read the Bible, the Bible speaks actually quite a bit particularly the New Testament, about the devil or about Satan. And in today's story, Jesus speaks to the devil. And it's not just here. Elsewhere in the New Testament, we find, uh, for instance, there's an example where Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Just after he'd been to Caesarea Philippi, he sets his face to go to Jerusalem, and he starts to speak to the disciples about his death and his resurrection. And uh, Peter rebukes you. Not so, Lord. You know, he, uh, he rebukes Jesus. And, and, and Jesus turns on Peter. And, and what does Jesus say to Peter? He says, get behind me, Satan. You know it, don't you? Get behind me, Satan. And, and there are many other places in the New Testament where Jesus speaks either about the devil or, in fact, to the devil. So the Bible is quite clear, there is a devil. And he's always seeking to destroy our lives. One of his tricks is to try and convince us that he doesn't actually exist. And in popular culture, many people have fallen for that lie. Now the second point I, I want to, to make is this. Now just as people tend to make light of the devil, we also tend to make light of sin. People generally see sin as something that is done by people who are really evil. You know, mass murderers like, like Stalin or like Hitler. Uh, that sort of a character. But we don't see sin as these small things. We, we don't worry about the odd white lie. We don't worry too much. We don't think much about losing our temper. Oh, well, you know, everybody, everybody does that. You know, or, or getting drunk, or spreading malicious gossip, and so on. But the Bible says that sin is breaking God's laws, the Ten Commandments. And, and that, if we break God's laws, it leads to death. So, the consequences of sin are deadly serious. The Bible says all have sinned. It's not just those who commit the worst types of crimes. All have sinned, and sin leads to death. Right from the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, remember in the Garden of Eden, um, sin came into the world. Sin came by the devil in the form of a snake, a serpent questioning Eve. Did God say, he says to Eve, did God say, and Eve replies, we may eat of any tree in the garden, but not of the fruit that's in the middle of the garden. So he questions what God has said. And, and, and then he throws some doubt into Eve's mind. You, you won't die if you eat of that fruit, he says. You won't die. 
So he tells her a lie because she did die eventually. And that one sin that came into the world then led to another sin, that led to murder in the, in the next chapter. Cain and Abel. And then it wasn't very long when we get to the time of Noah when the world was in such chaos that God regretted. He was sorry that he'd made the world in the first place. Sin is deadly serious. So let's turn to today's text. It's Matthew Gospel chapter 4. Uh, uh, well, if you turn to chapter 3 and look at that first of all. Um, Jesus was baptized by John in the, the River Jordan. And he comes up out of the water, uh, and a voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, says God the Father, in whom I am well pleased. Now, we're straight into chapter 4. The Spirit, from uh, being there at Jesus' baptism, leads Jesus out into the desert. And what's the first thing that he tempts Jesus with? How does he start his first temptation? He says, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, what did God said just a few moments ago in the previous chapter? This is my beloved Son. And Satan says, if you are God's Son. The devil, as he did at the beginning, wants to cast doubt. If you are God's son. The seven, second temptation, the devil again begins, if you are God's son. And again in the third temptation, similarly. Now, be sure that if the devil tempted Jesus, he's going to tempt me. Well, I know he does. And I know he's going to tempt you as well. Each one of us. And he's going to do all sorts of things to trick us. All sorts of lies and deception. Sometimes he's called the deceiver. And he tried to deceive Jesus with, by casting doubts. He tempted Jesus when Jesus was vulnerable. He was at his weakest. He'd been in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, it says. He was hungry. Now, if I go without lunch, I'm hungry. Forty days. I can't imagine what it must have been like. Forty days and forty nights. And he was hungry. And he was at his weakest physically. And you know, the devil would do the same for you and for me. He look for a vulnerability in our lives. Something where we're most likely to give in to temptation. Most likely to fail. He look for those points especially in our lives. Whatever they may be. And I'm sure they'll be different in me than they are in you. So what did Jesus do when he was tempted? Each time he replies to the devil with the same beginning, the same words. He starts off by saying, it is written. All three times he quotes from the scriptures, from the Old Testament, from the book of Deuteronomy. Perhaps Jesus had spent those 40 days meditating and thinking from those, the, that, that chapter or, the, or those, the, the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. I, I'm sure he must have known it by heart because that was the, the custom in those days to, to learn things by rote. We don't do it these days, do we? But we, they did in those days. Uh, and he was reading, perhaps he'd been reading the book of Deuteronomy, and, and that's why he turned to these three parts, these three verses in his replies. He says in Deuteronomy, he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. Uh, and then after the third temptation, he replies from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Well, how well do you know the scriptures? How well do you know the scriptures? 
David, the psalmist, wrote a very long psalm, Psalm 119. <clears throat> it's got 176 verses in it, I think. And uh, it's set into sort of stanzas or, you know, verses. Um, each verse is eight, each, each stanza is eight verses long. And the beginning, the first stanza begins with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. And the second stanza begins with the second letter of the Jewish, the Hebrew alphabet, Beth. And so on, all the way through the, and there's not 26 letters in the Greek, in, in, the, in the Hebrew alphabet, so there's, I think there's 22. If someone can work that out, you can probably tell me, is that, right? is that 176? Eight times, yeah? Okay. Uh, uh, but in each verse in that psalm, he mentions the word of God in one way or another. He talks about the commandments of God. He talks about the word of God, the precepts of God, and, and so on. And in verse 11, this is what he says. He, he writes, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let me read that again. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is what Jesus was doing. He was using God's word to combat Satan, to fight against Satan, to resist the temptation that Satan was bringing to him. How well do you know the scriptures? E each weekday, Monday to Friday, we, we could arrive at nine o'clock and we sit around that group of tables there, just, just a few of us, and we, we say morning prayer together. And in that service, just a simple service, um, we read the Bible and we pray. And there's a set reading each day. Uh, and we've been, sometimes we read just the Old Testament, sometimes the Old and the News, and so generally we read a psalm as well. Uh, and we, we spend some time just, just pondering it. Why not come and join us? You know, get into that habit, that routine of, of reading the scriptures. Perhaps you can't come on a, 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 on a weekday morning, but why not do it at home? Read the scriptures sometime in your routine for the day. Spend time each day getting to know the scriptures. You know, you, you might say, well, I've read the Bible. Don't need to read it again. I've already read it. You know, what, what do you do when you've read a novel? You take it to a second-hand shop and give it away. But we don't do that with the Bible, do we? Because the Bible, there's always more to know. You can read it again and again. And, and each time you read it, there's something new that will, will jump out at you. Someone was speaking to me just a, a, f a few days ago. I think it was, I think it was Sally. And he was saying how you were, you'd read something over and over again. This particular script, I can't remember what it was now, but you'd read it and, and you, you said that um, this time I read it and I saw something completely new in it that I'd never seen before. I might be getting it slightly wrong, Sally, but I think it was in Luke, yeah. And, and uh, you know, keep reading the scriptures. The, the scriptures... God will use them to help us to combat, to fight against temptation, to do battle with the devil. Now, Paul, in one of his letters, he writes, writes a letter to the church in Ephesus. And in that letter, he speaks about the armor of God in chapter 6. And he, he says that we have many, uh, <coughs> many pieces of armor such as the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and so on. But we have one, uh, one weapon that's offensive. The other weapons are all defensive to, you know, to stop uh, the enemy from attacking us. But we have one weapon that is to go on the offense, and that is the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Bible. And Paul says that uh, it is to... The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, is to help us to take our stand <clears throat> against the devil's evil schemes. So we have the Bible as a means of combating temptation. We need to think, where are my weak points? Where are my weak points? 
Why is it ever likely to succeed if he tempted me? Remember King David? He was idly spending some time in this palace, on the roof, sun, sunbathing or whatever he was doing up there, uh, uh, but he was not with his soldiers out at battle. And he was idling his time away and, and he looking down over the, over the city of Jerusalem and there he saw Bathsheba and she was bathing. And he looked at her and he started to lust after her and then he called her up to the palace, had sex with her, she had a baby. And that led eventually to, to David uh, scheming to have her husband Uriah the Hittite put to death. We need to avoid the places that we know will lead us into temptation and then on to sin. So Jesus uses the word of God, the scriptures, as a weapon to defeat the temptations of Satan. In, in the letter of James, it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will flee from you if we resist him. You know, it's not inevitable that we're going to fail oh you know we say we say oh, oh that i just i just can't stop myself when i'm tempted in this way i just i, I know i'm going to fail but there is hope that we can succeed we can overcome temptation it is possible to stand up to the devil recognize it him and resist him and what will happen? He will flee from you. The power of Satan is strong. But the power of Satan is nowhere near as powerful as the power of God. Satan can be overcome if we ask God for his power to resist. Now at the end of our text this morning, I'm not, I'm not going to go through and talk about the actual temptations themselves. I'll leave you to, to read through those for yourselves. But we read that the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him. But there's a, a parallel. Um, this, this story is recorded not just in Matthew's gospel, also in Luke's gospel as well. And Luke adds a, a little detail at the end that Matthew doesn't mention. Luke says that the devil departed from Jesus until an opportune time. So this wasn't the only occasion when the devil tempted Jesus. Jesus just didn't tick that off and say, right, I've done that now. Let's move on to the next thing. I don't need to worry about temptation anymore. No. The, tem the temptations kept coming. And we read in, in, uh, in the book of Hebrews that Jesus was tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. So there must have been many more different types of temptation that came to Jesus in his lifetime. Don't think because you have overcome temptation today that the devil won't attack you again tomorrow. The devil may use the, come with the same temptation tomorrow or the next day. Or use an, a, another type of temptation to try and bring you down. So we need to stay close to God at all times. But what happens when we do sin? Is that it? God just simply says, right, wash my hands of you, throw you on the scrap heap, that's it, you've failed. No. No, no. God has defeated the devil. God loves you. There is forgiveness from God. Why did Jesus come to this earth in the first place? Because he came to overcome Satan. He came to die on the cross, as we saw in the video. He came to take the punishment that ought to be ours for our sins. And when he was on the cross, he exclaimed, it is finished. And by that he didn't mean I failed, he meant exactly the opposite. He'd succeeded, he'd completed the task that God had given him to do. He'd overcome sin, he'd overcome the devil. 
he'd overcome death itself and provided for us a way back to God. Of course, we have to put our trust in God to receive that salvation, but in Christ there is that sure and certain hope of forgiveness when we do sin. So don't be discouraged if you fail, because we all fail. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even if we sin, we have that knowledge that we are, can be forgiven for those sins. But let's resist the devil. Remember Martin Luther? You know, the 13, uh, 39 articles. That's, that's what Damien wrote. Isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> the, the 95 theses that he nailed on the church door at Wittenberg, the beginning of the Reformation. Martin Luther. He, he said this about temptation. He said, I can prevent birds from flying over my head. No, I didn't. He said, I can't prevent birds. <laughs> I can't prevent the seagulls from flying over my head. But I can stop them from nesting in my hair. He didn't actually say seagulls. But uh, I'm just thinking of it in our area. We've got so many seagulls, they attack us, don't they? Um, he was talking about temptation to sin. You know, it's, sin is inevitable. We can't stop the, the, the birds flying up there. Sin, the, sin uh, sorry, temptation is inevitable. But the, we don't necessarily have to submit and give in to sin. We can stop them from landing in our hair. You know, when we fail, and we do, God will provide a means of escape. But I wonder, have we allowed the seagulls to nest in your hair? Have we let them take your fish and chips away from you? <laughs> you know, if so, we need to be working on destroying those nests of temptation in our lives. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Jesus. We thank you that he overcame the devil. And we thank you that he used scripture as a means of driving away the devil. Lord, may we use him as our example. May we get into the scriptures and learn them and have them all the time in our lives so that we may Use them in our battle against the forces of evil, the devil and his minions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, and sometimes in life it can feel like we're in a bit of a wilderness. We're in a desert place. Uh, our next song is all about how we can praise God in every circumstance of life. So let's stand and sing, Blessed Be Your Name.
remain standing as, using the words from Colossians chapter 1, we confess our faith in the Son of God. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, powers, rulers and authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Please be seated as Anne comes to lead us in our prayer. Dear, dearest Lord, we come to you in humility and contrition during this season of Lent. Loving God, may we endeavour to know ourselves and through our knowledge of the scriptures, follow your holy life. Bless all our church family here in Thornton and bless Damien and Andrew and their family. May their ministry be successful and bring joy. Bless Peter and Paul for their dedicated contribution to our church life, as well as all our many volunteers here who work so hard to make Christ Church visible in the community to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dearest Lord, we pray for the health and well-being of the King the Queen Consort and all the Royal Family. We pray for our government. May they be discerning and wise in the difficult decisions they will have to make at this time, especially concerning the escalating cost of living, the desperate war in Ukraine and the difficulties in Northern Ireland. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray with all our hearts for peace, especially in Ukraine, where de daily we see the conflict escalating and the suffering of men, women and children increasing. Dear Lord, give strength and wisdom to those protecting their country and quieten the hearts of the oppressors so that a peaceful and dignified ending to this war may come about. We pray for your mercy on all families and children suffering from injury, starvation and squalid living conditions in war-torn countries. And we pray for all those who suffer from the effects of oppression, violence, because of their gender or religion throughout the world and in our own country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you all those who are suffering from the devastating effects of the terrible earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Lord, please comfort the injured and bereaved and bless all those who give aid and help that it may be distributed fairly and honestly. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayer. Lord, we pray that you will put your healing hand on all those who are sick. Empower doctors, nurses and carers and all involved in care with wisdom, energy, kindness, gentleness and patience. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who have died in faith. Grant them a share of their eternal kingdom and comfort those who are bereaved. We take a moment to bring those people to mind. Finally, a prayer for Lent, adapted from a prayer by St. Teresa of Avila. May you be blessed forever, Lord, for not abandoning us when we abandoned you for offering your hand of love in our darkest, most lonely moments, for putting up with our stubborn souls, for loving us 
more than we love ourselves for continuing to pour out your blessings upon us even though we respond so poorly for drawing your goodness in all people including us for repaying our sin with love for being constant and unchanging amidst all the changes in the world for your countless blessings on us and all your creatures may you be blessed forever lord merciful father accept our prayers for the sake of your son our savior jesus christ amen since we are justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ who has given us access to his grace the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you just turn to the person next to you and say the peace of the Lord be with you peace be with you at home and now we come to our offertory prayer and so our offertory prayer is a way for us to offer to God the things that we have given or intend to give let's be quiet for a moment in his hour of his temptation when Jesus hungered, he quoted his father's words to Israel in the wilderness. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have provided all we need. All that we have is yours. Receive the offering of our hands and the gratitude of our hearts. In the name of our Saviour we pray. Amen. Please do be seated. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live for him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We pray to our Father, as his Son, our Saviour, taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it, you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him, who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we'll now sing our final song before the throne of God above.
The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. So if you can stay for refreshments, please do come through to the hall or for tea and or for browsing books in a bookshop. But now we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. 